What is a galaxy? A galaxy is basically a crap ton of stars that come together over millions or billions of years. That's a simple explanation. The word galaxy comes from the Greek galactikos, which means milky, which is where the Milky Way got its name, because it kind of looks like spilled milk when you see it in the night sky. Originally, the only galaxy that people were aware of was the Milky Way, and they actually thought that it encompassed the entire universe. It wasn't until the 1930s, which is less than 100 years ago, I'm just going to point that out, that a guy named Edwin Hubble discovered that there were other galaxies, other Milky Ways. So for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, people had no idea that the universe contained billions of galaxies. They thought it was just limited to this one. And then the universe really opened up less than 100 years ago. There are people alive today that were born before it was understood that there's more than one galaxy in the universe. And that's incredible. But now we know that there are hundreds of billions of galaxies in the known universe. So that doesn't include the entire universe, it's just the observable universe. Hundreds of billions of other galaxies. If you take a look at just the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, which is a tiny, tiny, tiny part of the sky, there's actually over 10,000 galaxies in this one photo alone. So galaxies, again, they're just this group of stars, right? They're about 200 billion to 400 billion stars in our own Milky Way galaxy. But not all galaxies are created the same way. There are small galaxies, we call them dwarf galaxies, and they don't contain nearly as many stars. For example, the very small galaxy Segway 2, I think it said Segway, could be Segu, contains only about 500,000 solar masses. So it's only about 500,000 times larger than the sun. That's not very big, but most dwarf galaxies do have millions of stars. Not hundreds of thousands, it's usually in the millions range. But it's nowhere near the hundreds of billions range. So what kind of galaxies are out there? Well, Edwin Hubble came up with what is commonly referred to as the Hubble tuning fork, and the classification is still used today. We talk about elliptical galaxies, spiral galaxies, barred spiral galaxies, and lenticular galaxies. We basically separate galaxies into four major groups. We have elliptical galaxies, spiral galaxies, lenticular galaxies, and irregular galaxies. Elliptical galaxies are smooth and roundish and almost like clouds. One of the largest galaxies in the universe, IC1101, is an elliptical galaxy. It has over a hundred trillion stars and it dwarfs the Milky Way. Spiral galaxies are usually what we think of when we talk about galaxies. They're like the Milky Way. They swirl around a central supermassive black hole and they kind of look like galactic eddies in space. Barred spiral galaxies, on the other hand, have a bar. Note the bar. Lenticular galaxies are kind of difficult to distinguish between elliptical galaxies. They kind of look like these huge disks in space. So they're not puffy and cloudy, but they're not spiral either, but they're more disk-like. That's a lenticular galaxy. Now there are what astronomers call irregular galaxies, but it turns out that irregular galaxies are almost always caused by some external problems. So for example, you'll see two galaxies colliding with each other or they're starting to steal stars from one another and they look very, very weird and irregular. Whether or not these are an actual separate type of galaxy has been debated. As one astronomer put it, if you crashed your car into another car, you wouldn't say that you'd created a new type of car. So irregular galaxies are basically the galaxies that just don't fit into any of the other categories. They're the misfits. They are misshapen and they're just kind of weird. So yeah, that's galaxies in a nutshell. And again, this is a beginner video, but I hope that it helped someone out there understand a little bit more about galaxies. It's good to be a geek. It's good to be a geek.